to you I give all the praise let my life be you so your glory to you I give all the praise to you I give all the praise ye to you I give all the praise let my hope be you so your glory to you I give all the praise I'm singing hallelujah hey hey I'm singing hallelujah let my hope be you so your glory I sing in hallelujah. Oh, day you're a body, you're a body, you're a body, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, you're a body, you're a bold Lord, oh, day you are faithful, you are faithful, you are faithful, King of Kings. Lord of Lords, I worship you, I worship you, worthy, you're a worthy, you're a worthy, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, you're a worthy, you're a worthy, Lord, worthy, you're a worthy, you're a worthy, King of Kings, Lord of Lord, worship you. Hey, bo, you're a hey, bo, you're a hey, bo, you're a hey, bo, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, you're a hey, bo, you are my the Lord, Mardi, you're a Mardi, King of Kings. Lord of Lord, I worship you. Oh, but don't you tell me, call me, she, oh, correct it, oh, but don't you tell me, call me, she, oh, correct it, oh, but don't you tell me, call me, she, oh, correct it, oh, but don't you tell me, call me, she, oh, correct it, oh, Lua. Loa baba, ho loa gua, ho ru koreti ito, inu gua ye, ho ru koreti ito, loa loa baba, ho loa gua. O correcti he to he no bo ba ye o correcti he to luwa o luwa baba o luwa wa o correcti e to he no bo ba ye o correcti he to o luwa luwa baba o luwa wa o correcti Correcti he to he no go ba ye o ru correcti he to belite ha 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 belite ha ha o lo belite da for you ha ho ho. And war of the hollow belated, belated, ha ha ha, belated, ha ha ha, hollow belated, for you have holy, righteous, and war. Oh, the holy, belated, belated, ha ha ha, belated, ha ha ha, holy, belated, ha. For you are holy, righteous, and 
I fall on God, your great free the God you worship, Lord. I come to humble myself, God. I declare your body, your never praise, your never exalted, your never magnify. Every mountain begin to bow, every mountain begin to bow, every mountain begin to bow, and I exalt every valley in the name of Jesus. 
soto regada gada 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 soto regada gada 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 soto regada gada gada soto eh masuda ya baba soto eh masuda ya soto upon the blood the power and the blood eh the begin to dominate raka baba soto ya soto the life tonight the internet upon the blood yes god resource of connection upon the blood raka baba soto soto every mother has connected every woman that has connected every youth that has connected every child you got will not remain the same in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible says come on to me you that live and every last day it will grant rest God King of glory Father Jehovah as we have come let the earth will rest upon our soul I have a rest upon our spirit in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth my God and my King the Bible says God King of glory yes God is a well my Father Lord God as people be going to draw my Lord God I ask for satisfaction upon their soul tonight in the name of Jesus Christ no we hear the word that remember the same in the name of Jesus the Bible said come up to me or you that live and every like that Lord God you grant rest when look up to you your words is God as the eyes of the servant Lord God look at unto Lord God your master as the eyes go of the enemy look at unto the ends go of your mistress so our eyes are on you your Lord our focus are on you Lord we are asking tonight doing our lives doing our means what no man can do in the name of Jesus yes that situation the devil meant it for evil, but Lord God turn it around for our good in the name of Jesus. I call you to your war, Romans head, God bless in the head. But I know how things work together, how things work together for good for them that lost you, Lord. Masotoya Baba, and those that are called according to your purpose. We have been called tonight according to your purpose. We are asking Lord God, bring upon your word tonight. Let them do good in our lives. Let them bring revival. Let them bring restoration. Let them bring transformation. Let them bring Mexico. Let them bring Helen, Father, Lord God, let there be a new story tonight. Let the story of life begin to change as a result of an encounter with power in your work tonight, God. In the name of Jesus Christ. For they look up to you, their faces were lighting and they were not ashamed. Yes, God, Jehovah, our focus are on you tonight. Holy God. Do it again, do it again in our lives. Open eyes to say Jesus, to lay seed upon the truth. Holy Ghost, do it again, Daddy. Do it again in our lives. Open eyes to see Jesus. To let it upon the truth. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Do it again. Baba, do it again in our lives. Open eyes to see Jesus, to look see the hope of the truth. It is ready, it is ready. All around us, oh, we can see is a light to rain. Why not Jesus give us a rain? Until we are wet, until we are soaked with the light to rain. It's raining all around us. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. We can feel it. It's a light to rain, that's a rain. Why not Jesus give us a rain? Until we are wet. Only we are soaked with the light to rain. Until we are wet, until we are soaked with the light to rain. 
that is washing me online. Oh, yes, so says the Lord God, so I should tell somebody out there, can the mother forget the sucking child? And yes, we clear in my spirit, the whole mass soto in my spirit mind. Somebody is saying that God has forsaken me, He has forgotten me. Rakababa soto basoto. Here come the words of word of God directly to you tonight. Is that to tell you, yes, can the mother ask you this question? Can the mother forget the sucking child? If no is your answer, why then are you worried? Why then are you troubled? Why do you feel abandoned? Why do you feel downcasted? That God has forgotten you. God is asking me, return back to him. Return back to him. Return back to him. You that is discouraged. And at least the strength of God upon you. Be encouraged in the name of Jesus. God has strength to serve him again. God has strength to trust him again. God has strength to believe in him again. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hey, I can't say every spirit of weariness. Every spirit of discouragement and rebuke out of your life. For nobody said God and go empty and dead. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Lord. And I can tonight. Every spirit of accident. Every spirit of accident. I see accident. I see accident. Every spirit of accident. Whereby at the end of the day, the person will not be walking. Yes, oh yes, living on a wish. I cause a spirit that, that wants to arrest your both of your legs. I cause in the realm of the spirit, the name of Jesus. But what I see concerning that accident, it is not something that is physical. It was something that was done in the realm of the spirit. In the realm of the spirit. I cut out the works of the wicked. Concerning your life, concerning your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will not be found of that cripple. Yes, you will not be found of that wish. You will not be found to become crippled. You will not be found to become crippled. Hey, in the name of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. of Nazareth. To you that I'm talking to, mm -hmm. once in a while you are seeing it in the dream. You are seeing it in the dream. You woke up and you were wondering, what's what kind of dream is this? God is asking me to take, take it up. Take that dream serious. Take that dream serious. You were in the dream and you saw your, something wrong with your legs. And you were wondering when you woke up. Masoto and every change of destiny every change of destiny I see somebody's destiny is being changed being manipulated that result in your struggling in life you work so hard not to show but I cause our spirit in the name of Jesus Christ I cause those powers of darkness and oppression in your life in the name of Jesus Christ hey the person I'm talking about is a serious believer but you see everything in your life not coming to fulfillment because yet your destiny has been tempered with your destiny and be tempered. The person I'm talking to is not now it started right from your school days. That is started right from your school days. That is started. Oh, that's been struggling all along. You were never dull, but you know you were intelligent. But I come right from school days, you have a struggle. Why? Because the enemy knew that you are set for greatness. And the person I'm talking to at this moment, God is asking me to tell you, you have decided to settle for less. Because things are not working here, you have struggled, you have worked out, you have prayed, and said, so just say, oh, if not so, God's making things big, make a cuckoo take out like that. After all, my life is even better than some people's own. Hey, you are settling for less. Hey, God said that is not this way for you. Remember the book of Genesis, chapter 11. The Bible says that close to the end of the chapter of that chapter 11. The Bible said the father of Abraham, Terah, he took the yes, Abraham, he took Lot, he took Abraham's wife, and they were set to go to the land of Canaan. But no one was up to Terah decided to settle. Oh, yes, in the place, oh, without proceeding to, yes, when he said to settle in Ara, without proceeding to Canaan, and there the Bible recorded he died there. Maybe May you not die being below your abilities in Jesus' name. Amen. May you not die below your abilities in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And raise upon you strength to fulfill destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. If he has sent me, he has called me. Masoto. The power, the strength that is at work with me in me. And at least upon you, begin to carry you far in the name of Jesus Christ. Begin to carry you far in the name of Jesus Christ. Also, there's somebody that is listening to me. You are decided to follow 
follow God, but the more you follow in the month, I see the things are getting too difficult. There's there's hardship on your way, and you are like discouraged. Masoto ya dada masoto masoto. Receive two and to stand. Receive grace to stand. The person I'm talking to. Oh yeah, you study the word of God. Hey, you hear the word of God, you believe it, and you try to put it into practice in your life, and you see you are not seeing results. You are not seeing you are becoming very yes. It's like you you know you are fed up. God says no. The Bible said the book of uh, and it said in the book of Hebrew chapter ten verse verse thirty five. He said for you you had need of patience after you might have done the will of God. You had need of patience. After you might have done the will of God, that you might obtain the promise, that you might obtain the promise. Hey, you have done the will of God by studying the word by being obedient. But what you need to attach to it is patient. It's patient. The Bible says you should not drop back because he that will come will come and will not tarry. But if any man draw back, the Bible says his soul will not take pleasure in him because we are not then that draw back onto perdition. You know, when you begin to realize the Bible is, and God is making me to understand that you. Yes, so that your blessings, your miracle will not be taken from you. And yes, that, that blessing's desire will not be withdrawn from you. Remember the case of David in the Bible. Hey, second Samuel chapter 11, where the, the king supposed to go to war. He decided to relax. Oh, master, that was when, yes, thing that affected his life, that affected his kingdom in a negative way. That was when it happened. Sleeping with Bechaba, the wife of Uriah. And that led to, yes, the shaking of his kingdom. He saw Nassalam and Every oh yes, rising up against him. The kingdom was about to be withdrawn from his hand, if not for the mercies of God. What led to this relaxation? God is asking me to tell that so don't relax, don't relax, don't relax. Man of God, carry strength. Oh, yes, at least the strength upon you. Be determined and be focused. The Lord perfect all that concerns you. The Lord perfect all that concerns you. You that have that little child that always cry in the night, every torment. I of the wicked, targeted against that child. I return back to send that in Jesus' name. I return back to send that in the name of Jesus Christ. You that I'm talking to, I want the being put to get the, yes, the oil, get oil. You don't have an oil here in your house. Oh yes, I want you to get any oil, any oil at all. Please get it. I want to pray over it. And I want to encourage you. You are the one that watch, it, watch me every now, now and then. When you are coming on like everywhere, I say, please, just drink beside you. Yes, anointing oil, bottle of anointing oil and water. Yes, most of the time, God leads us in that direction. God leads us in that direction. So I'm going to be praying over it. Yes, we are not in your and water. Masata ya baba soto. Legende wa soto. Inda wa soto. I release the power of God. Over that anointing oil. In the name of Jesus. Anointing oil. Yes, I repeat what I was saying. Yes, because there was a distraction. Masata ya baba soto. You that have a little child. You that have a little child. Because while I was ministry, oh yes, there was a distraction from the background. But some of you didn't hear me well. Yes, you have a little child. And yes, that child always cry in the night. Always cry in the night. God is asking me to tell you he's an oppression of darkness. In an oppression of darkness. So please, you're going to get a bottle of an oil. But over you don't have oil, get any oil in the house. And also, yes, a bottle of water, specifically oil. Let me specify, yes, let me specify it's oil. You are going to be using it to annoy that child before that child goes to bed. Every night you pray seriously over that child. Over that child. And also let me glad to announce to us. Please, let's maintain our family altar. Every night is very, very powerful. Pray over your heart soul before you sleep. Don't just sleep like that. Why? Because the Bible says, why men slept, the enemies came to so task among the wheat. And if you know also the past of the night, oh, yes, it's very, very dangerous. So we have to be very, very watchful, to be very, very alert. Don't just spend all the day. And at the eat in the night, you will try to just go straight to bed, especially when you have a family. We that are adults, you can testify. Most nights, if not for the message of God, if you are prayerlessly, you are the prayerless type. You see that you have evil dreams. You have terrible dreams. Either you're not making love in the dream, or they are pursuing you in the dream, or you are eating in the dream. These are not okay to your spiritual life at all. You know why? Because there's lazy in the realm of the spirit. That is to say, we that the adult who can remember. Don't talk of these children. You know, most of the time, children cannot even remember their dreams. It takes a grace and God. So that is why, as a family, you must wash over your household. Especially being as a man, you are the priest. Yes, you are the priest of your house. You are to be in charge. I don't care whatever kind of job you you're doing I said maybe you go for night's job maybe you can you know to you know pray with them before you leave or settle with your wife 
any any hard this, this, that thing of these children they are very very important we care, care so much at times we made the mistake of caring so much for the physical needs of our children of our home we forget about the spiritual no no you know forget that it's the spiritual that controls the fiscal and you know see children that the parents labor so much for they pay i you them you know the higher school they pay the higher school fees everything but the highest school, you know the the most costly clothes and shoes for them but at the end of the day those children they turn out to become non-entity why because the fiscal was taken care of but the spiritual genius was never cared, cared for and at the end of the day those children the enemy was able to manipulate their destiny so as you are caring for them physically also watch over them spiritually it is very very important please please this is my message and i don't know who it belongs to that is what god said i should tell somebody tonight please watch over your absolute praise the lord hallelujah we thank you lord jesus we'll give a praise Every power of the weekend. I want you to pray this prayer with me tonight. So I want you to talk to God and say, God, speak to me. You know, the essence of we meeting every, every Wednesday like this, it's not just to come and perform a show. It's not just come and, because it is tradition, it's something we must do. Then we just come and gather and go. No, that is not the essence. If not, the power and the life in it is being denied. And when it becomes like that, it is dead. And it is not of God. Anything that is of God, one thing we know about anything that is of God is that it carries life. God is filled with life. There's nothing dead in God. So if this program must give life every day, it, it because of God, it's expected to give life. And you so well, that's what we're going to be praying today. We're going to be praying and say, God speak to me. God speak to me. If you come here, you're not hearing from God. So that means the program, the aim is not being fulfilled. I am not for that. Hey, yes, I'll be saying to give life. And that, yes, that is why I spent so much time for the preparation, for the planning. And if you have been following me very well, you know by the grace of God who will be the glory. Life has been discharged to you. And so I wanted to pray to I say, God, speak to me. God speak to me as a result of today's garden. Do new thing in my life. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Talk to Jehovah. Father, in the name of Jesus, talk to me, Lord. Talk to me, Lord. Father, Jehovah, use me to reach people. And Lord God, reach me also in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord God, as for instrument, pass to me, Lord God, to bless life. And also, Lord God, bless my own life in the name of Jesus Christ. I will not just be Lord God, but let the one use at the end of the day, Lord God, Jehovah, I will be left aside. No, 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 no. I refuse to be a sample that gives direction. And at the end of the day is being abandoned at the particular spot. My father, as he uses me also, Lord God, yes, God, Father, may I not be left out. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. And to the rock of ages, we'll give a praise. We give you all the glory. Tonight, I stand by the authority in the name of Jesus. Every evil power, evil forces. That want to hinder the people from hearing at the stool in Jesus' name. Amen. Every unnecessary assignment, busy schedule that makes them to be distorted from hearing the word I come against in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible says we should not be ignorant of the enemy's devices. And so every manipulative way of the enemy to stop people from hearing your word I call tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I plead your blood over the internet connection. Amen. Father, Lord, a hearing ear and understanding heart. Father, I live upon your people tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you think to to me to lie to your people mm. that the end your name be glorified. Amen. Thank you for speaking to me. As we look into all the benefits of God of your divine presence, Lord Jehovah, as we see how you will restore us to mind. We are asking Lord God, may we be restored in every aspect of our life, body, soul, and spirit in Jesus' name. Metally, Lord God, spiritually, let there be a restoration. Financial, financially, go oh God Jehovah, marital, let there be a restoration. Amen. Father, ex wise, Father Jehovah, in every aspect, let there be total restoration. Amen. In Jesus' name, yeah. amen. amen. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. So, God, be the glory this evening. We thank God. Thank you for being online. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. I celebrate you as I will always say, I don't take you for granted. You are the reason why we come online every evening like this. And I thank you very much for your feedback each time we come online. That you always you know drop some comments that goes, goes to sell us. You are going with all you are following us. I appreciate you. God bless you. Thank you very much. And the Lord will reward you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank God for making yourself available to come and hear the word. And the word has come tonight to do you good in Jesus' name. So I want to encourage you. You just sit back, sit back. And the Lord will dish out his word. He's forever faithful. For they look up to in their faces to your lighting and they were not ashamed. You will not suffer shame as you did come to God in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And also to you that have been sharing our videos. Thank you very much. We appreciate you. 
to so thank God for the good news, you know, for the testimonies that have been trooping him. We are grateful to Jehovah. He may not deserve all the praise and all the glory. Amen. You that have been following us, please, I want to encourage you to continue to hold on, who come, and also invite others online. Invite, don't be a partaker of good things alone. Let also be able to tell, about, uh, tell others about Jesus. You know, why the world is living in confusion today is because there is no solution. There is no solution. People are frustrated. Let's look beyond their makeup. Maybe the ladies, maybe because of the fine hair they wear, maybe because of the clothing they are wearing. Let's look beyond. Many have come to discover in life, they might appear so okay physically, but inside is dying. Inside is dying. And how do we rescue a dying world? It's through the world. It's through the world. The word of God, nothing else. That is what the Bible said. The word is life. We have got nothing to give to this generation. Is the word of life we have got to give to him and to them. And so that is why when you receive such messages, the word of God, please don't hesitate to share. It's not only my videos, but others also that have been of benefit to you. So that we help one another. We help one another. We need to blame people when they fail, when they make mistakes. But in the process of their failing and making mistakes, if we are there to help them before then, they won't have made that mistake. So let's not be that those are offered mercy after death rather why the death is about to happen to give a happy hand god will help us in jesus name how do we know this when you feel the sense of your spirit i don't know if you have ever had some push in your spirit to do something that's the holy spirit pushing you so do this or do that and you see that at the end of the day you just do it the person begin to give it back and say you don't know this call you made you don't know this video you shared how much he has come to do me this is what i really needed to hear at such a particular time Thank you for doing that in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Before I get to uh, uh, go ahead again tonight, I just want to say thank you to every one of our subscribers in, the, in our YouTube channel, Bishop Awodei or Living Faith Inc. Bishop Awodei or Living Faith Inc. Every Saturday, we know our God has led us to what we you know do every Saturday, family matters. And if you have a part of it, Yes, you will tell you will agree with me that it's you know definitely you have been blessed. I have had testimony trooping him that they have been blessed. They have been blessed. Continue to pray for us. And if you know you are interested, God is leading you to become part of us. You can give us a call. Our numbers are written on the screen there. You can give us a call. There are one of these that we invited to come to the studio and share your own videos or what you feel you can be benefit to the public also. That is why we are there for one another. And don't be scared. People that come online to do it, there are some of them, they have never done it before in their lifetime. When they just started, pick up courage, and you see them, they just flow. The same courage that we bring to you also. If others can do it, just believe in yourself. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't serve God and go empty-handed. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm -hmm. So I want to dive into the word of God so now what he has for us. God always up special meal prepared for his people. You know, every occasion in the normal life, every occasion has special meals prepared for each occasion. And so every time when you come before God, he has special meal prepared for us. It's like right through his word. If you are the type that follow God often, you discover that it is not what he said yesterday or two days ago, he's saying now. If I thought he's repeating himself, it's for a reason. So what I'm saying next is you don't come to God and you remain the same. No. There is a way he always fills you up. And I see you be fit tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. I see you be fit tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So God be the glory. We have been looking at the topic, the benefits of God's presence. I'll be trying to draw it to a close. But today, God just led me in another direction. The benefits of God's presence. We are still dwelling on it. We saw the meaning of God's presence, you know. Uh, it's uh, uh, evening around us. We're about to see that. So we got to know that God is everywhere. That's what we say when we talk about in English. How many presence is everywhere? But beyond that, we are talking about a special presence. A special presence that make us to do, or, or you know, unusual things that make us to go extra mile in life. That things that other, others are not able to do, they are not able to accomplish. But we were able to because of his presence. You know, there are things that happen that others look at onto you and say, you know, this is not ordinary. Because they know in the normal life, there's no way that thing can happen. But it is happening in your life because of his presence you carry. And we were able to see, for example, the life of Joseph, Genesis chapter 39, when he found himself in the Potiphar's house in the land of Egypt. The Bible says he succeeded above every other servant and because what God was with him. The Bible was always regular and God was with Joseph. 
God was with Joseph. He found himself in the prison, and while he was in prison, he became the leader there. And the Bible says God was with Joseph. And also, again, even while there, he was able to interpret dreams. So that goes to tell us that, you know, I don't know what you are passing through. That is not a yastic. That is not a way of you become crippled as a Christian. In the midst of that challenges, you can see rule. In the midst of cha that challenges, your destiny can see come to fulfillment, can it come to manifestation. It has to do with you. It's a personal decision. If Joseph, he passed through all he passed through. But you see something about this guy, he just don't need to move on. He had every cause to give excuses. I've seen people that give excuses. It's not because of this thing that is happening to me. I would have been there. It's not because I'm not I'm supposed to be married. Because I'm not married, I'm not able to do this. Uh, because I don't have a shop. I don't have money. Nobody to help me. No, no, no. no, those are excuses. We know we are there to help one another. But in regardless of that, what we need most in life is a presence of hope. Is a presence of God that goes to feast things. And I see your life being feast in Jesus' name. Amen. I see your life being feast in the name of Jesus. Amen. I see things being working now for your good in the name of Jesus. The land has fallen onto you in pleasant places. Mm -hmm. And so therefore you have a godly heritage in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. He that has sent you will not disappoint you. Mm -hmm. He that has sent you will not leave you nor forsake you. Mm -hmm. Before you came into this world, it packaged you. You know, we being human, we cannot send people on error and say, go and buy something for me without giving that person, for example, some finance, some money in their hands. How is he going to buy? It will be handicap. Or you send somebody in a, in a journey. You make sure everything that person needs to succeed in that journey. You just make sure you pack that person with it. Okay, clear example. Those of us that have children that are still very young, you no, know, uh, like for example in kindergarten, we send them to school and we have you know pack uh, food from there. We pack their bags because why are we sending them to school? We know that the house is not to go and learn alone. For that school, for them to be comfortable in that school setup to learn very well, is that we have to make their books available. We have to make their crayon. You know everything the, the, the pencils the you know the color pencils you know everything that needed you know a sharpener everything that is needed for them to be okay so not only that even their lunch bag we pack it because we know that if they are hungry there's no way they can concentrate in school things like that and beyond that we still relate to their teachers to see the welfare of our children and their fair in the school and some, some, some of us are pay school fees we still go ahead to pay school fees and you know all this is that what the end of the day to so see that the comfort of that child become a success in, at the end of the day in the school that and just use us as a physical uh, example what about god that are sent to us here on there you think we just abandon no these are things that god knows that we need this person and there are things we need for survival so there is no way if we abandon you or just leave you. So anytime you feel lonely, you feel downcasted. One thing I've come to discover in this our Christian work, anytime you feel lonely, you feel downcasted, that is when the presence of God is with you than ever before. It's the devil that is trying to make you to believe that he's far away from you. No. Anytime you don't see anything, you don't say, God, please help me. And before you know it, there is, there's a kind of strength that comes inside of you. There's a kind of joy that bubbles inside of you. There is kind of way your heart is open to the, the things that are impossible, but you begin to open and say, ah, so there's a way in this. I never thought there was a way. And I see you, God, making way for you in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. There is direction concerning that issue. I cause every spirit of confusion. Mm -hmm. I cause every spirit of confusion. Mm -hmm. I rebuke every spirit of delay. Mm -hmm. I rebuke every spirit of delay. Mm -hmm. I rebuke every spirit of delay. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Concerning that building, you will finish it. My Bible tells me the hands of Zerubbabel has laid the foundation. And yes, it will, the ends will complete it. And so I pray, this day, every foundation you have laid, Nama Kozondo, you never borrowed money to lay that foundation. Then will you borrow money to finish it in the name of Jesus. The beginning of it matters a lot. You started well and so you will end well in the name of Jesus. Amen. You never went to take another mass or yes, another mass wife or another woman's husband. And so no power will temper with your own in Jesus' name. Amen. You never went about seeking power to have children concerning years in your womb. And so no power will temper with your children in Jesus' name. Amen. I release them for success. Amen. I release those children for victory. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. So back to what we are seeing the word of God. The benefits of his presence. The benefits of God's presence. And we're able to see some of the benefits. One of them we saw that one. His presence brings us provision. His prayer and the second one we saw is that his presence brings us protection. And so the other one we saw his presence brings us promotion. Desire to be promoted, promotion is of God. You don't get it from anywhere, not through manipulative way. One day I've come to see about manipulation, bad deceit. You might deceive people and you know you scared the line. 
and get forward. Before you know it, you come back to where you started. That is God. There is no manipulation, you know, in the presence of God. You just do it his own way, or you want to do it in your own way. At the end of the day, it's as if you are making progress. Then after you, the person don't work out, work out for a while, he says, hey, come back to where he's coming from. So it is better we follow him one step at a time. Even when it's as if it appears slow, but something is sure is that we will get there. We will get there. You will get there in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. So today we want to see the final uh, point I want to have to eat concerning the benefit of God's presence. Written here is that His presence brings restoration. Yes. No, the fourth one. The fourth point. The third one that His presence brings promotion. We saw that the last time. But today we want to see the fourth point. His presence brings restoration. His presence brings restoration. God's presence brings restoration. You know, I look you not know, my user way of teaching. I like this, saying the meaning of a thing before I begin to dig deep. Because when you get the meaning, you will actually have understanding of what we are talking about. And so I went in search of what the, that word means, restoration. And what I have written here is that to add back what you have lost. To add back what you have lost. That is there's something that was formerly yours in your charge, in your possession. But one way or the other, you lost it. Let's say, for example, this pen was mine. But one for one reason or the other, I lost it. So what we are talking about now, the restoration, that's a way of me having this pen back. That's one way of the other, I lost it. You see, my hand is not empty. I no longer have the pen. One thing or the other happened. So what we're talking about the word of about the word restoration, we are talking about ah I will not have this pain back. See it back in, on my hands and I have it back. That's what we are talking about. Oh, what we're not embrace that is the presence of God that will help me to have this pain back. That is how some of us we have lost our heads. Do the presence of God in oppression in your life. I see your head being restored in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. That's how some of us we have lost our marriage. But through the presence of God in our prayer, I see that marriage be restored in Jesus' name. Amen. Not only be restored, but be filled with love that you, that you have never experienced in Jesus' name. Amen. Some of us, we have lost our children. Some children have walked away from home for months, for years. I see those children coming back with joy in Jesus' name. Amen. If God can do it for years, that mother, wedding mother, the Bible recorded in Luke chapter 15 from verse 11, the prodigal son. Imagine the prodigal son went away from home. Yes, let's take it that the father lost him. But one way or the other, he was restore back. That is the God of Osa. I see your tears being turned to joy as a mother in Jesus' name. Amen, yes, those children will be restored back to you. Maybe perhaps you, perhaps you have rebellious children, stubborn ones, they don't want to listen. But yes, we call we serving the God of restoration that brought the sword of time. So I love, I love about God and his word is that the word does not just come without fulfilling the purpose. Remember Isaiah chapter 55. He said, yes, just as the water come from this, you know, from the uh, 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 sky, and yes, came to water the soil, and does not return back to evil. So the word that comes out of my mouth will not return back to evil. Instead, we go to fulfill and complete the purpose which I sent it for. God was talking about his word. So when the word of God comes like this, it's for a reason. How come we are talking about restoration at this point of, at uh, this point in time, you know, at this hour of the year? Because God know that there are these people, there are things they need areas they need to be restored. And so you will not be left out this season in Jesus' name. Yeah. But as it's finance, you have lost. You went into your business and everything wrecked down. God has sent me to tell you tonight that yes, there is an aspect in the realm of the spring. He has arranged his angels in place, his proper position to bring about restoration in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. So be ready for a, you know, a great downpour from heaven. Be ready, be ready, just position yourself because God is a about to smile on you in Jesus' name. Mm. Praise the Lord. On and on like that, I'm not have been able to mention your face, but you just know that because that which desire for God is of a good thing, God will restore it. God will restore it. Maybe that womb that never bore a child, or you have bought that child and there was no way you could increase more. God is about to fix things in order in that womb. It's about to restore. Forget the wasted years. That is what will make me say. I begin to compare yourself with others. These have gone far. These are forget about them. No, don't think about the life. It's not how far, but how well. It's not alpha. Look at the Bible very well. It is not about having many children. But it's about how those children they are able to become something in life. Look at the Bible very well. There are people that have many of them. For example, a good example, Penina, the, the second you know, the, the, the uh, second wife to Akana, the husband to Anna. The woman Penina, the Bible says she had many children according to First Samuel chapter 1. 
But Anna only had one child at the initial stage, which was Samuel. And apart from Samuel, later she was blessed with extra five children. But my point here is that Samuel stood out. Samuel stood out. That's why the many children that Pedina had before Samuel, before Anna. So it is not about how people have gone ahead of you in life. You relax. Follow God at your own pace. The way he wants you to follow him. One step at a time. Follow him. The pattern you are making progress. You might see as if you are not doing anything. You are not where you're supposed to be. But at the end of the day, you find that those that have gone ahead of you, one way or the other, you either meet up with them or God at the end of the day put you ahead of them. And I see that happening in your life in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. The mistake we make is that we are so conscious about those that have gone ahead of us. We are so much in this. At the end of the day, we miss it. May you not miss out of the will of God in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So back to what we we're talking about, the, the, the definition of restoration. You no, know, I said initially that what? To add back what you have lost. To add back that which you have lost. That is one definition. But another definition, I looked at it again concerning the, uh, another definition uh, that has to do with restoration is that what would have been yours? What you, would have been yours? But you never had the opportunity to have it or experience it. What would have been yours? But you never had the opportunity to have it or experience it. What would have been yours? But you never had the opportunity to have it or experience it. Perhaps you know by now you should have been married. And yet it's no longer on your side, probably as a young lady or as a young man. And you look at it as, oh... This lady, or you know, this man, I would have been my husband, or would have been my wife. But it never happened. But God is saying that, relax. For the fact that that one doesn't happen, doesn't mean another one will not happen. It should have been yours. This is what I mean. I know by now, you, play, you know, I should have entered school. You know, but now I have not, I have not been able. It is my right. It's my duty. I know that I have worked hard for it. I deserve it. Or that promotion in the, in, at work. I know by now you should have been promoted. But you, never, you were never given that chance. So at the end of it, it's as if it was taken from you. You never experienced it. But God says that don't worry. He's going to bring you back to that position. No. Even better than you expected. Mm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. Amen. So let's quickly see, you know, ways to, you know, I look at why we're preparing this topic. You no, know, before restoration, let's look at ways we can lose our things. Before, you know, we talked about, you know, talking about restoration, probably what was yours that you lost. Remember the first definition we look at, you know, what was formerly yours, one way or the other, you lost it. Then I looked at it that, okay, uh, before we talk about restoration, how do we lose our things as Christians? Because this is very important. Because when you know how to lose things, next time you'll be very, very careful. Because talking about restoration, most of the time, since the grace of God, let's be honest. And there is a grace of God for you to be restored. It is better you don't lose what you have than trying to get it. That is why one, one, one a great man of God says that well, it is better not to be oppressed than to be delivered. It is better you don't suffer oppression at all than thinking, yes, let me go through the oppres oppression. And at least later I'll be delivered. It's like sickness. If you, if you have ever been sick, so to, maybe some, some ailments you have ever had, you will pray that it's better you have not had that sickness and say, eh, so far I'm sick, if I sick, I'm going to take mercy. It gets some sickness as we say. If we not, as they take mercy, I say the worst. So it's better you say, where well, you, you be in good health, you fight to be in good health, than say, eh, because the hospital is free, I will go and treat, I, they will go for treatment. The injection will affect the issue for your body. The day you go, they, they find vein, they not sleep, all those shuku shuku, all those unrestlessness, they put you for bed for hospital. The time when you're supposed to not wake up, you know, when you're in your home now, you are so comfortable. You sleep when you wake up, and by hospital, they give you time to wake up, they give you time to sleep. They begin to give you food, whether you like it or not, begin to swallow it. You see, at the end of the day, it's better you maintain good death. Then I say, I joke with my head, I know at most I will go to the hospital. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So, in the course of that, to so look at ways we can, you know, uh, lose the things we have. Number one is our true deceit. I wrote here true deceit. Like, for example, Jacob's experience in the Bible. Let's see the book of Genesis, chapter 31. True, true, what? true deceit. 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 When you are being deceived. Okay. True deceit. When you are being de uh, deceived. Genesis. Chapter 31, verse 7. Let's see Jacob's experience. If you are there before me, you can help us out. See, trying to get to my Bible. Yeah, Chapter 31, verse 7. Okay. Chapter 31, verse 7. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, you remember the story of Joseph in case you're not so conversant. Let me quickly take us back. Joseph was a guy that left a father's house, you know. Uh, um, uh, um, sorry, Jacob. I'm talking about Jacob. Jacob was his, uh, you know, he was a twin brother to Esau. And they both were the children of Rebecca and Isaac. I remember Isaac was a son of Abraham that he had at a very late age. So Jacob now, you know, he deceived his brother Esau and Esau threatened to take his life and he has to run away from home and he found himself in the house of his uncle Laban and he was there for years and he served Laban for his, uh, his uh, daughter Rachel and Laban deceived him. Instead of giving him Rachel, after seven years of service, he offered to him Leah. And so because he loved Rachel very well, Laban told him, if you need Rachel, uh, you have to serve me for another seven years. And he was willing to do so. And 14 years, he got Rachel and Leah. And after that, you know, he was without nothing. And Laban told him, you have, you want me to bless you, to, you know, with this livestock. Because Laban was, he, he had a lot of livestock. He was an husband man. So, he, uh, he and Jacob came to a conclusion that he will serve them for six years. That he will give him also, offer him some part of his livestock. So, at the end of the day, he spent about 20 years, over 20 years with labor. But the funny story, a part of this story, you know, where we are talking about, where we are going to, we are talking about this year. Uh, but at the end of the six years, after serving, uh, uh, serving uh, Laban, his uncle, for six years for the livestock, Laban never gave him those livestock. Rather, he deceived him. And let's look at where we are reading this, in this evening. Verse 7. Genesis 31, 7 says, and your father had deceived me. So this was a time that Jacob was now talking to his two wives, the uh, uh, Rachel and uh, Leah, concerning their father, Laban. Say, and your father has deceived me and changed my way the same times, but God suffered him not to hurt me. So you see that at the end of the day, that Jacob, uh, uh, Laban really deceived Jacob. And let's see how he deceived him. You see, at the, uh, he promised him that he's going to give him the livestock. But at the end of let's see how he did it. Let's see Genesis chapter 30 from verse 25. It's a bit lengthy, but I'll just do some part and explain the rest with our mouth so that we can go ahead to save time. I read from verse 25. He said, and it, uh, okay, let's uh, he said, and it came to pass 25, 30, 25. It came to pass when Rachel had born Joseph, that Jacob said unto Laban, send me away that I may go unto my own place and to my country. Give me my wife and my children for whom I have served thee, and let me go. For thou knowest myself in which I have done thee. And Laban said unto you, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thy eyes, tarry, for I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for thy sake. And he said, Appoint me thy wages, and I will give it. And he said unto him, Thou knowest how I have served thee, and how thy title was with me. For it's well, okay, because of time, let's move it on. So, uh, vex uh, 32. He said, I will pass through all thy flock to, today. Remove from thence all the speckled and spotted cattle and all the brown cattle among the sheep and the spotted and speckled among the goats. And also shall be my ayah. Yeah. You see, what is happening here to just save time is that, you know, uh, after Jacob went to meet Laban and said, I want to leave. I'll serve you enough. I said, so, uh, uh, Laban said, ah, you cannot just go empty and then let me give you something. So Jacob said, okay, if so, give me, you have a lot of cattle, you know. Lot of livestock. So let's do it this way. Out of all your cattle, among them, the one that has spots on it, on their skin, give me those ones. Then the one with that spots, you take those ones. When Laban look, when he saw it, look at his livestock, he played another trick on uh, uh, Jacob. He played another while you. What did he do? He went to his livestock and removed those every animal that was spotted. That would have been Jacob, according to his agreement with Jacob, he removed everything and separated it. After he has removed them, take them away, he went on three days only, he left the house for three days, he was off. So that Jacob would not see him and say, Oh God, why you can't treat me like this now? Why you can't play me while you like this? He went up and not through this. Remember what we are talking about? That the way the enemy can steal our things is through this. You see, at the end of the day, Jacob was deceived. May you not be deceived in Jesus' name. Amen. May you not be deceived in Jesus' name. Amen. Then let's look at number two. Another point I have here, how our things can be stolen before we are restored is our enemy's manipulation. Enemy's manipulation. And that has to do with the Shunammite woman. If you look at Second uh, Kings chapter 4, because I the Shunammite woman that, you know, welcomed Elisha, gave him food and everything. Remember, he had no child. And through uh, Elisha ministry, was able to have a child and only a son. But at the end of the day, that son fell sick. 
and he was sick at the end of the day that son actually died so what do we conclude from there is that the enemy went to steal the life of that child came to steal the life of that child so two enemies manipulation can lose what we have that is why as Christians we are being encouraged to be worshipped and know how to pray us to pray be very very sensitive don't just get things and just relax when you get things not that anything you get two prayers need to be sustained two prayers it's just that when we get our, in, in the last uh, like uh, our cross in the farm for example what makes the, the, the seed that you have sown inside the soil to grow it's too watering you have to water 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 and start it has grown and when you start yielding fruits you have to sit on you know you know before you start yielding, you have to water and everything so some of us like our prayer life with we will water and water and you start yielding fruits like, you know without seeing so once you start we just relax and, you think, and that is why you know the enemy can just come into our camp and do whatever he wants to so please through enemies manipulation your things can be stolen it can be stolen because we are christians will kiss ought not to just happen to us except we are light then the last point i have here is that what our carelessness our carelessness no as christian let's come to the understanding it's not everything that the devil causes in our lives there are times we just say devil devil at times also we cause this by ourselves and one of the reasons can be too carelessness like the prodigal son luke chapter 15 from verse 11 we all know the story of the prodigal son he went away from his father, he went astray, took the property, you know, things that should have been his own. And the Bible said, true riotous living. True riot living. That is, he wasted without caring. Another version of the Bible says, he squandered it. Not the word squandered in English, is that when you make use of something in a nonsense way, without planning, without any research, that is how the prodigal son lived. And that is how he lost everything that's supposed to. And that is how some Christians we are. We live a careless life. As God decided to bless you, how have you been able to save some parts? I have just been able to say, okay, let me give some, let me save some. You see, some of us, we just get things and we waste it to, you know, wasteful living. Or some, some of us, you know, not only to finance, you know, our life, we can waste it. You see, a girl that is up to the age of marriage, you know that this the first man will come ask your hand the marriage the second man the third man you feel that you are not ready yeah, yet yeah. that is how some ladies will waste their lives and at the end of the day when you now say you are ready yeah. the men are no longer ready because that time you are no longer their match so that is what the bible says is that chapter 3 verse 1 there's time for it. it's only for women also for men i've seen men because they didn't get married on time when they want to get married becomes soft becomes difficult so the way it happens to man a woman that is happened it happens to me but this day we are so sorry guys women women no i have seen both aspects so it is not always the best or a woman as opposed to have children on time play uh, uh, played our uh, life out i took careless miss and at the end of the day the child is no longer fought come and say it's the devil no on and on are like and like that we have to be very very careful the kind of life we are living so these are ways we can lose things so if that is the way we can look things and we believe that god is god that we can be restored and let me let's get something clear at this juncture you have to be very clear here that it is god that restores it is God that restores. I don't know wherever you have you no know, lost, whatever thing you have lost. It is God that will restore you, and He said to do it. Why? Why is it so? Well, look at John chapter three, verse seven. Cannot read it. He said, "A man can receive nothing except being given unto him from above." So there is no way you fight by yourself. I see some people, the labors who have the work out. Yes, it's good. God is not against hard working. In fact, that is one of the things the Bible encourages. The Bible says that you don't work, you not eat. Yes, it's very important. Say, shall bless the fruit of our hands. So, without you, well, well, if you want God to bless, God is what is your hand work. So, these are the things. So, but in the midst of it, so without God being in charge of your life, there is no way things can fall into a place. And I see things working out for your good in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. And when you look at Joel chapter 2, let's see, Joel chapter 2, verse 25. Joel 2, when the book of Joel is close to the, end, uh, the Old Testament, the end of the Old Testament. Joel is close to Malachi. Joel chapter 2, if you are there before me, you can help us out. Joel chapter 2, verse 25. I love that verse very well. Very, very well verse of the Bible. Because in case you are discouraged, that is one of the antidote to discouragement. In the word of God, that is some, the pee you have to swallow every day and night. 
you have to you know memorize it it has to just become part of you you know it goes to encourage you what is happening tonight <laughs> somebody help me out in the book of joy yeah, i don't know why my bible refused to open there okay i've seen it joy chapter 2 verse 25 he said, and now we restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. See, God is talking about, I say, ah, that's the saying that it's not man that will restore, will restore anything to you. It is God. So in case you are the child that is running after man, because you know that man is flensha, you know that man is here for you. God is saying, no, look beyond men and look up to him. And also if you look at Psalm 126 verse 1, he said, when the law restore again, when the law, the law return again, the captivity of Israel, he says, it was like them that dream it. When he returned again, the captivity of Israel, it was like them that dream it. That is King James. But when I read it in Amplified, I was so blessed. I love the way Amplified explained it. Trying to get there. Uh, the book of Psalm 126, verse 1. Then to look at the amplified version so that we'll see. He said, When the Lord brought back the captives to Zion, Jerusalem, we were like those who dream. It seemed so unreal. So, the part I want to bring from there is that we're brought back, brought back, brought back, restore. The thing was so too, it was too much, more than the expectation. The, according to where we read, it says, well, to them it become like a dream. You know, there are some dreams you have, and when you wake up, you are like wondering, ah, oh, why is it a dream? I thought it was real. Because the thing was so good, there was a good life while I was in that dream. Ah, why would I see this kind of life again? So to this dread then, it was like a dream. But, to, but the thing is that it was real. It was too much, more than their expectation, and so I see to them it was a dream. Praise the Lord. May your dream come to reality in Jesus' name. Amen. May your good dream come to reality in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm trying to draw it to close tonight because of time. Hallelujah. Amen. And so what I had wrote here while I was preparing, something caught my attention at all. The restoration of your soul. We have seen that what is the presence of God. And don't about this, all this restoration. It's the presence of God that will actually bring your restoration. Because of time, we cannot go into it. Genesis chapter 31, verse 9 to 12. You can go find out. We you know we're talking about the story of Jacob first. How, you know, Laban, he and his Laban, it's all called the way death with him, deceived him. But you see how God restored him. In Genesis chapter 31, verse 9 to 12, it was a result of the presence of God, like God's restoration. I think that is what we did. Let's see. Because that is one of the key points in this study tonight. Genesis chapter 31. Let me read it. I didn't want to read, but I feel a shake in my spirit. I wish read it. Genesis chapter 31, verse 9. Say, Thus God are taking away the cattle of your father and giving them to me. Look at Jacob now speaking to his two wives. You know, he said, And it came to pass at the time that the cattle conceived that I lifted up my eyes and saw in a dream, and behold, the rams which leaped upon the cattle were ring struck, ring struck speak cold and grizzled and the angel of god said unto me in the dream saying jacob and i said yeah i am you see what is happening here from verse 9 jacob was able to make the two wives understand that it is god that took the capture of their father to give it to him that's to say at the end of the day is the presence of god that you know took the cattle of that he had that brought the cattle or you know that's supposed to be in soul from the onset that made it possible that is the presence of God that makes it different, that causes a restoration. So in case you are in need of restoration and want to be restored, what you need first is the presence of God that will make that restoration to be possible. That is why you see some of us will, will struggle to be restored so much and we are not restored. Because it's like we are setting the cat before the horse. No, you have to bring the horse before the cat. It's just like you are trying to make things happen, trying to do business without money. How is it going to be possible? We know there are some business that need trust. But even when, you know, maybe you drop trust, you drop money, and you say, how is it going to be possible? No, it is not possible. So also, you need the presence of God before any restoration can take place in your life. Remember what we are saying is that the presence of God brings restoration. And finally, to now, what I would love to add, Psalm 23. Psalm 23. So if God is interested in restoring us, one of the things we must know in the process of God restoring us is that God delights in our soul to be restored. No matter how God restores a man, what is his ultimate goal is his soul. 
God wants your soul and I to be saved. Our souls. Of God does not joke with the soul of any man. Let's see Psalm 23 verse 1. It's a very popular place in the Bible. Remember the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want on and on like that. Let's see. Verse 3. Psalm 23 verse 1. It says, He restorates my soul. That is the is God that restores our soul. So He wants our soul to be brought back to Him. So no matter how God restores you as a Christian, He can bring works. Anything you have lost, husband, wife, children, houses, riches, your way. Why is He doing this? The essence, the final uh, finality of it all is that what? He wants your soul to be saved. That is why you see in the New Testament, Jesus went about doing good, blessing the people. But at the end, you see that what? He would teach them about the kingdom of God. It was so, it is king, the kingdom of God was so essential to him. The saving of their soul was so essential to him. Or oh, another way God does it. I do not see people, God blesses them. They are not yet Christian. God blesses them. God is only interested in that blessing. Oh, when he blesses them, that he so draw them to him. Those blessings will not attract them to God. They will look at him and say, upon all my sin, me God is still blessing me. I think this, this God deserves to be saved. And one way or another, God has used those blessings to so win them to him. Oh, another way God does this is that, at times, he saved the soul, he saved our soul. It makes us that when we give our lives to him, which are to show us that then our soul has been saved, then begin to bless us. So in any way, which is your case, baby, no, let it be important to you to know that what the saving of your soul is very important. Or you are you a Christian? You know, you say you are a Christian, but you are not sure of your salvation. Please, is this you are walking on a dangerous ground, and God is not so happy with such a life. Your, to you, your salvation must be sure. And every other thing will fall into place with time. You living as a Christian without being sure of your salvation. It's like somebody living with a, a heart problem. I mean, serious heart problem. You know, no matter how we live here on earth, our heart is very, very, or rather, I, no, okay, yes, let me say, our heart is very, very important. You know, the heart controls the body. So, and also, your soul is very, very important, irrespective of how you are blessed. Because when you look beyond, at the end of this life, where will you be beyond here? So please, we must fight as, as, at every cost to clear, keep our soul clean, everything be intact. Supposing the, 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 the trumpet sound, now where you will be, where will I be? And finally, I add this to you. When you look at that uh, Psalm 23, verse uh, 3, we said, the first part says, Restore my soul. But the B part, let's say, He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. That's to say, when you are restored, your soul is restored, and it restored you know, in know Him. One well, of the way is that, well, the way He restores you, He will not give you direction. No way, we're talking about God restoring us. One well, of the way God rest, restores us, the basic way is that we will not give you direction. God does not just come down and restore you. He gives you direction on what to do for that restoration to happen. Just like a, a young lady in need of life partner. What God will tell you, will not tell you that what? Okay, he is your husband. Okay, wait for me. I'm bringing him. Or I'm bringing her. If you are a man, I'm bringing her, bringing her for you. Or into a business. Don't worry. I will restore you. Do this business. Or don't do this business. Oh, God, all those people always give direction. That when we rest, I'm 23 verse 3. B, it says that what? He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his nation. That God will always give the leading. We don't have a dead God. God, you don't say God that's what? God that is inactive. It doesn't say anything to you. No, that is why we children of God will find every way to hear his voice. He will always give direction. Remember the Bible said the steps of the righteous are ordered by God. The Bible says also in the book of Isaiah, you will hear a voice behind you say that well, this is the way going is. Look at the Bible very well. People that walk with God and they were a the success at the end, they have from God, they receive direction. So if you want to be restored, you need this presence to give you direction. He speak to you through a dream. He speak to you through this promise anyway. You want to fall into a problem, you can hear his voice. He can speak to you in the dream. And say, no, you wake up and say, no, 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 this dream I had. This, this business I want to do, it does not, it won't work. This marriage, this dream I'm seeing, no, 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 it, I, I refuse to involve myself. So thank you very much tonight. God bless you for making yourself available for the word of God we have had tonight. God is safe. God is safe. God is safe. Please, I'm hearing from my spirit, somebody take your dream life serious. Take your dream life serious. God is telling me to tell somebody there's a dream you had. And you're not, like, not taking it so serious. God is to tell you, please begin to take that dream serious. He wants to give you direction. He wants to give you direction. At least something negative will not happen. That before you now realize it's too late. And begin to remember, ah, I had the dream. I never took it serious. So please begin to take your dream life serious. At the time that you no longer you know, remember your dream. I think this at this juncture, begin to pray. I say, God, help me. So, so that God will need to give you clarity, you know, concerning what next step to take out to go about your life.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for making yourself available tonight. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Remember to share this video. Also, remember to drop your wonderful comments. Thank you. Amen. So, before we leave tonight, remember our tradition, the Holy Communion. So, we're going to be blessing you tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Our Father will give you praise. You have not prepared yours. Remember our tradition every uh, Wednesday before you come online. Please take it upon yourself to always prepare it, set it aside. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord will give a praise. Lord will give you as I worship you. Please prepare yours in case you have not less rush your bite. Father, we give a praise. We give a praise. We give a praise. We give a praise. Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we adore you tonight. Thank you for reaching us with your word. Thank you tonight. Lord, we release your power into this holy communion. Father, Lord, that this become your blood in the name of Jesus. Not just one. The Father, the one that carries your power and your presence. And Lord, not just bread again, but Father, Jehovah, your body. We ask him, let it go to fulfill things in our lives in Jesus' name. Things are impossible become possible. Lord, let it begin to bring about restoration into our lives in the name of Jesus. Lord, you died so that we might live. Or pray life upon us as we take this in Jesus' name. Lord, you went so far pain on those cross. Your body be broken. Your blood be shed. So that our blood will no longer be shed. We will not suffer those pains. I command healing upon every sick soul tonight in the name of Jesus. As the sick take it, let them receive healing. Oppressed with the liver. Thank you for solutions. Thank you for making ways. Thank you for the strength and determination to, to, to be re totally recovered. To restore all totally to us in Jesus' name. Thank you. In Jesus' name. I see that cut case. We said to us in the name of Jesus. Somebody that is having a serious cut case. God said, I should tell you it is settled. Be at peace. Be at peace. He has gone ahead of you. Yes, he will be the judge. Thank you, Lord. We exalt you. Unto the Lord shall the gathering of his people be. We are gathering together round to thee, unto the Lord. We are gathering together round to thee, Jesus said. We are gathering together unto thee, unto the Lord shall the gathering of his people be. We are gathering together unto thee. Do one or two well, let us thank God. Let's put a man thank God for today's service. Lord, we give you praise. Thank you for the manifestation of your presence. Thank you, your word. Thank you for Lord words of knowledge you release. Thank you for words of wisdom. Thank you for direction. Thank you for your word. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Father, we exalt you tonight. Thank you for your word that is said to you. Lord, we give you praise. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Please stay blessed. See, I come across your way again next week. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Bye for now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen.